Hi, this is James from Hornbill Technical Support, and this is a short video to show you how to configure a shared mailbox using the SupportWorks server and SupportWorks client. Um, this will be a video purely for the setup of the mailbox rather than how to show you um, how SupportWorks deals with incoming or outgoing email. Uh, there are other videos in terms of uh, how email is routed within SupportWorks. So, as you can see here, I'm using the SupportWorks 750 client. Um, this is using ITSM. Um, however, uh, this will also apply to any other current versions of SupportWorks and any application, so it doesn't just apply to ITSM. First thing I'm going to do is go straight towards the SupportWorks server configuration. And there's a few tabs that we need to set up here. Um, what I'm going to do first is go to the inbound SMTP mail routing first and click on new under the domains. So within here, um, this is where you're setting up your domain to. So I'm just going to put our oh, test domain uh, and I'm just going to click no to this because I don't want to import any addresses at this particular time. Now once our domain's in here you'll see the reason why we put this in um, in here uh, because you'll need to associate a particular address to your mailbox afterwards. So uh, second tab we'll need to go into, you don't need to worry about these tick boxes either by the way, uh, is the system mailboxes tab. As, as you can see by default um, we have a shared mailbox here but we do need to configure the settings uh, within. First of all I'm just going to type in uh, our server name here so this will be your exchange server name and also my default email address okay so I'm just going to copy that as well so if I go into the mailbox properties itself you'll see here that um, associated addresses is blank so you need to associate a particular email address with that so you can see when we click on new our domain that we've added actually comes up here. If you don't add the domain, then this won't actually appear. So I'm going to just type in again the email address and make it default to that. So you can add in multiple SMTP addresses just like you do in Exchange uh, in this particular area. And uh, next tab we're going to services. So here you can configure the different protocols for outgoing and incoming email. Um, so what I'm going to do is configure the SMTP. So again I'm going to type in the server name. I'm going to use port 25 for this exercise uh, and signature would be your email address and then you're, you're going to specify the account that you've um, associated to the actual mailbox and type in the password. So you can set up encryption, but remember if you do set up encryption you may need to change the port number. So I'm just going to go to test and as you can see uh, connection has uh, passed successfully. If there was a problem with the credentials or the server couldn't get to it then a error will appear. So I'm going to click OK and OK again. Now you do have a selection here of POP3 and IMAP4 for incoming email. Uh, both work in exactly the same way um, with support works. I think the recommended is to use POP3 however. So POP3 is a similar setup. I'm going to type in the exchange name and the username that you're using the uh, using against the account. Okay, um, so I'm going to test that, and again, it's uh, passed successfully. Um, if I just add a number onto the end there, you'll see the error that comes up, and it will tell you exactly the reason why it's failed as well. Unknown user or bad password. So I'm going to just take that back. Great. Okay, so that's our um, services set up and connected uh, successfully. Um, one thing you'll just make sure as well is that obviously that you can actually tell on it to these ports. That's all that test is actually doing, is just trying to actually get to the server from your support work server. Okay. Next thing is your customer lookup. Now here is pretty much 
standard. Um, so this is basically what details you're going to pick up from the email so that it automatically matches with the end user or the customer. So usually it would be user DB, key search, which is the primary key on that table. Email would be email. First name in here. Last name is actually under surname. It's a label set as priority. Control will be web flag. And password is password. So as long as all these are set up exactly in that way, then it will match with your customer record fine. So that's all this area is set up. You don't need to change anything in the mailbox status or queue because that will just tell you what's currently in your mailbox. Um, so this tab is done so we need to now go to the messaging tab. Now there is a few different connectors that have been used with SupportWorks. Um, at this time only the internet connector is actually supported so this is the only one which actually will work fully um, using the protocols that we just set up. So I'm going to, as you can see, the red box is indicating that it's currently off, so I'm going to highlight internet, click start or stop, and I want it to process outbound and inbound messages. I'm going to click OK. And what I'm also going to do is select a mail scheduler and go to configure. Here is the amount of seconds that it's going to take between uh, processing email. So it's going to wait 300 seconds, i.e. 5 minutes, before it will bring in more email. So I'm actually going to set this to 10, but bear in mind if you do bring in a lot of email you might want to limit that to a higher higher amount. Okay, so now that is done. What we do need to do next is configure the client side of things. So now what I'm going to do is go into my analyst properties and now you need to assign that mailbox to your analysts. As you can see here, I've got the shared mailbox. Uh, if your shared mailbox does not appear there, you can simply click on Add Shared Mailbox, and then it will appear. So I'm going to assign all rights to the mailbox, and apply that to my current session. And the one other area here is to set the mailbox as your default. So within, have to dab it quick there. Tools, Options and Settings, Email tab. You'll see here default mail origin, so as soon as you open a new email and you want to do the one against the actual email address, apply OK. And you'll see that when I open an email up here, it'll automatically be from that address. So let's try and I'm going to send an email into that system. in an email. Okay, so I've just sent that from our test Gmail account and as you remember I set it up to uh, be 10 seconds so it shouldn't take too long before the actual email comes in here. Bingo, there it is. So, incoming email has just been working. As you can see, I said, sent it from our Hornbill Cares. I'm just going to reply to it. Send. And again, it's only going to use that 10 seconds limit, so it will send pretty quickly as well. And you'll see from our Gmail account emails appeared. So the only other uh, area that you might be quite handy for you to know is that you can manually uh, move the email on without having to wait the five minutes or you know ten seconds. Um, I'll show you a smart trick that you can do. So if you change the directory to the program files, Hornbill, this will need to be on the actual server itself. So in the bin folder within SupportWorks server, 
you can type in the protocol so internet mc specify the mailbox and uh, specify whether inbound or outbound so you can do minus i for inbound minus o for outbound and minus v will just tell you exactly what's what's going on so the underscore help desk is the actual mailbox name I'll press enter and it's processed it um, if it's found email to process then it will tell you how many emails it has actually processed so that's it uh, any problems let me know um, but that should be uh, pretty simple to set up